Hello, my name is Blake, and this is Stop Making Sense. A lot of video essay channels focus a lot of their time on movies. Every frame of painting, wisecrack, and the nerd writer to name a few. But there's always one genre of film that they seem to ignore. Documentaries. And I get it. It's a lot harder to, let's say, extract the essence of a shot or judge the quality of the writing when the director doesn't have full control over what's happening. However, there's an elephant in the room when you talk about documentaries, and that elephant is ethics. Now, before we delve deep into ethics of doc film, we have to define it properly. Often, ethics gets mixed up with morals. The two discuss similar things and, in the right circumstances, can in fact be the same. Merriam-Webster defines morals as considered right and good by most people, agreeing with a standard of right behavior, and ethics as the discipline dealing with what is good and bad with moral duty and obligation. Can you see how they might get confused? Basically, morals is a standard of principles determined by society, and ethics is a standard of principles determined by the individual. In documentary film, filmmakers do have a set of morals, ironically referred to as the code of ethics. These are basically principles that are required of the director for the picture to keep its integrity intact. Some examples of these include the director must not interfere with the life path of the subject, the filmmakers cannot pay the subjects for their use in the film, and all parties involved with the film story must be given the opportunity to represent their self. There are many more than this, but these are just some of the biggest three. These rules can be quite vague. For example, you can't pay your subjects to film them is a part of the code of ethics. However, you can take your subjects out to dinner without violating the code. The code of ethics is purposefully vague to allow the director of the film to maintain artistic integrity, but because of this vagueness, the line can be blurred when it comes to ethics. A fantastic example of the vagueness of the Doc Code of Ethics is the HBO series The Jinx. The series is renowned for the huge controversy and debate over the ethics of documentary it caused when it was alleged that the directors withheld evidence against Robert Durst. Now, I'm not here to say whether or not this is okay, although I think that what they did was totally fine, but many people outside of the film world thought that this was not just a violation of ethics but a violation of the law. People are still questioning today whether or not it was okay to withhold the contents of the film in order to sustain the story, and while it hasn't yet been determined if it did violate the law, but because of the jinx, Robert Durst was arrested and convicted. This is an example of something that journalists would never do, and is showing of the differences between journalists and documentary filmmakers. Journalists have a desire to keep their stories as factual and unbiased as possible, theoretically, where documentaries go the opposite route and are often very biased. In turn, journalists attempt to get a story, and documentarians attempt to get an emotion. A very important and interesting counter-argument to doc filmmaking in general is the question, what gives the filmmakers the right to film these people? Now, this is a very interesting question, and often there are many different answers for different films, but one answer that is always consistent is the subjects do. Let me repeat that, the subjects themselves give the rights to film them. In docs, characters that are being followed are not actors, and they're not getting paid. In the industry, these people are referred to as subjects. You will not see a subject in a film without their express permission to be filmed. This isn't just an ethics thing, it's also the law. Oftentimes, the filmmakers and subjects become friends during the process. An example of this is Aaron Wickedens and Dan Rabicki's 2014 film, Almost There. The pair spent eight years filming with the subject Peter and became good friends with him, a relationship that they still maintain today. Unlike Hollywood, the characters are not actors, so maintaining a good relationship with them is vital to the completion of the film. Something that must be remembered is that in documentary, the person behind the camera 
is just as much of a character as the people on the screen. A great example of this subject-filmmaker relationship is the 2002 film Stevie, directed by Steve James. The film follows the director as he reconnects with a young man he formerly mentored while volunteering in the Big Brother's Little Brothers program. Stevie, the titular character, has not had an easy life in the last 10 years that Steve, the director, has spoken to him, and Steve feels guilty for losing touch with Stevie. Without giving too much detail, Stevie is eventually tried and convicted of a very serious crime and is put in jail. When the film was released, many people called into question the ethics of Steve for including Stevie's incarceration in the film. Many people thought it was a violation of Stevie's privacy to include that, while Steve, the director, debated that he didn't want to hide Stevie's wrongdoings, that Stevie was who he was and did what he did, and it would be a disservice to not show his full character. This is a great example of how ethics work in the world of doc film. It takes two sides of an issue, brings them out into the public, and makes them open for discussion. That's the power of documentary filmmaking. Unlike fiction films where every single thing is meticulously crafted to be exactly what the director's vision is, documentary is more open-ended and oftentimes inconclusive and is more in touch with a part of society at the moment it was captured. While fiction films open up discussions about cinematic techniques and hidden meanings and plots, documentary sparks discussion on our present world, the good and the bad, and how we can change it for the better, and in the case of the Jinx, might actually have an effect on our world. So the next time you watch a documentary, think about who's behind the camera and what you aren't seeing just as much as what you are. a new Stop Making Sense video every Friday. We're a channel that analyzes art, games, and tech, so if you're into any of that stuff, definitely hit the subscribe button so you can stay tuned on when we upload things. We just launched our Patreon channel, so if you want to support us even further, hit the link right over there, and it'll take you to our Patreon page. You can donate $1, $5, $10, any amount. It doesn't matter. We really appreciate it. Patrons get exclusive access and special benefits like having your name at the bottom of the screen at the end of the videos, early access to videos, and the opportunity to play games with us and do live Twitch Q&As with us. So if you want to support us even further, head on over to our Patreon page. We really do appreciate it. Next week, we got a tech review of uh, the camera that's actually filming me right now, the Sony A7S II, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be a good one. All right, uh, keep making great documentaries and stop making sense. We'll see you next week. <laughs>